All right, guys, I'm hearing a lot about this EV slowing down, this EV adoption rate. What I can tell you is everyone wants an EV, not everyone, but most people would like an EV. Are they a little expensive? Not the Teslas anymore, the Ionics. A lot of them are, are very cost effective. Um, what I can tell you is is when they gave the subsidize out to make all these charging stations and um, it was just free government money. It, it was just a free for all, it was a grab. So you had these sorry ass um, companies come out and EV go blink. All of those stations are just crap. 90% of those don't work every time you pull up to them. So if you bought any other EV other than a Tesla, and yes, I love Tesla, I'm biased with Tesla, but I'm just trying to give you the straight facts. If you bought anything other than a Tesla, your charging experience was absolutely horrible. And that's the anxiety that people say range anxiety. Most people, not all people, but most people in Teslas don't have that because we press a button or when we put in our destination, it tells us if we do have to stop at another charging station. Other vehicles don't do that. And the sad thing is when you do find a place to go charge with your other EV, other than a Tesla, whether it's a Ford Mach-E, whatever kind of vehicle you have, I'm not saying they're bad vehicles. I'm saying the infrastructure to go charge those things were crap. And every time you pull up to a Blink or you pull up to an EV Go, you gotta download an app, you gotta make sure there's cards on the app, and then to, when it doesn't work, you gotta call them and you gotta be on hold for 20 minutes. So literally you're taking 30, 35 minutes to have them tell you that system doesn't work or they're gonna go ahead and activate it for free this time and give you a free charge. Well, when they do activate it for free, you're only getting like the kind of charge that you would get when you're at home. And basically that means five hours to fill your car up. That's pretty much how it works at home, even with a Tesla charging system. It takes about five hours, but most people go to work, they charge their car overnight, and then they're ready to go to work the next day. I have never had any issues going to a Tesla charging station, a supercharging station. Literally, you put in the destination and it's always good to put it in before you get there so your battery preconditions um, to be ready to charge super fast when you get there. But one time I went to a Tesla charging station, it didn't work, it showed a little red ring around the uh, charging when I would plug it in. And what I did is I pulled out and pulled into the stall next door and that worked. So literally when you go to Tesla charging stations, the minimum I've ever seen is four. But you, you know, there's 14, there's 20, some of them have 40 stations now. That's the slowdown in EVs. It's Blink and EVgo and these other charging stations. They have made it miserable for people who bought anything other than a Tesla. Fortunately, the system's gonna start coming out for people to start using Teslas. I believe in 2024, it's starting at some places. And then next year, you're gonna be able to start using Tesla supercharging stations. And, um, and I'm sure they're gonna start changing these other stations so that they start working correctly. But like I said, it was a money grab when those people built these crappy charger systems. And that's why most people will say they'll never buy an EV or they don't want an EV because they've heard the stories or they actually owned an EV and they were part of it. I can tell you if you're thinking about buying a, a hybrid, don't do it because I understand, you know what, people like, you know, from Los Angeles to Vegas, you can drive and just stop at a gas station and get gas and go there. Listen, most of us take a break anyways. When I drive my Tesla to Laughlin or Las Vegas, I stop at Barstow. There's, there's like four other places now to stop on the way, but I stop, I plug my car in, it needs about uh, 20 minutes to get me the rest of the distance, but I let it go an hour and charge up completely because I go get a bite to eat. By the time I get my food, get back to the car, it's almost completely charged. But that is why the adoption rate has slowed down for EVs. Because literally, and I believe 
Ford and GM, I believe all these makers did all this on purpose because they are so far behind Tesla and what Tesla does. Um, they're, they're playing catch up right now. Now, listen, I get it. Not everybody wants to own a Tesla. That's fine. I got no problem with that. When they get these charging systems going the way they should be, it's going to be really nice for a lot of people. Because I can tell you, not having to go get an oil change, not having to drop your car off, to be able to have an update on your car and just have it done right over the internet on Wi-Fi, to me, it's just absolutely incredible. That's why I'm so for EVs. Um, another thing is, as people say, well, they're damaging the environment. Listen, everything we do damages the environment. Name something we don't do as people that doesn't screw our environment up. What I can tell you is, is that they can recycle now about 95% of these batteries. 95%. It's only going to get better. The technology is very young. I'm driving right now. My car is driving and doing it all on its own right now. No other car can do that. Not even, not even Cruise or Weibo. They don't do it correctly. When Tesla comes out with this full self-driving software, it's going to save a lot of lives. There's no denying that. Most people say, well, I like to drive myself. I like driving. You know what? If you like driving to work every day, good for you. I don't. So if I had something that could drive for me, the monotonous tasks of what I don't want to do and I can free myself up to do other things. I like that idea. Um, I also like the idea of the blind and the handicapped and people that want some kind of freedom but they can't drive or they, they don't drive, they don't know how to drive. Even in a, a foreign country, I mean, you're going to have this full self-driving stuff working for you. But I can tell you the adoption rate is gonna to start to increase when people start to see that the charging's getting faster, that the infrastructure is there. And I can tell you right now, gas stations out there, you guys should have some charging stations, liquor stores, stores, malls. You guys need charging stations. You know why? Because most of the time when most Tesla people go to charge their cars or most people go to charge their cars, we don't just charge it enough to get to where we're going because where we're going might not have something to charge when we need to leave. That's the problem with an EV is where you get to your destination, now you gotta go stop again and charge. So is it completely way better than having a gas car? Not right now, not at all. I'd be lying to you if I said that. But if you can learn to work around those little inconveniences, man, having an electric car is just absolutely fantastic. Driving it, um, there's just no sound. And I know people say they love the sound of a motor, but when you've been driving in a car and you're able to have a conversation with somebody or you're able to talk on your phone to somebody without having this excessive noise, you start to get that after you ride in somebody's car um, that is a gas-powered car because you like think to yourself, wow, this is a little noisy. But Again, guys, what I can tell you is the EV adoption rate is still going. People still want electric cars. China's taking off with it right now. And if Americans, one thing we don't like is to be second place in anything. So I suspect by the end of 2024, things are rapidly going to change with electric cars. We'll see. I don't have a crystal ball. It's just my guess, but I can just tell you. I think it's gonna be different. So with that being said, go out and get yourself a Tesla, test drive one. And um, basically it's an Apple iPhone, which is, we all know the best phones on wheels.